on this one particular one, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is James Thomas, and I'm from the American Red Cross out of the Long Beach chapter. We're part of the Los Angeles region. And what we cover, we cover uh, 41 cities, two ports, and an island. Okay, that island being Catalina Island, the two ports being the Long Beach port and the LA port. And now we have extended, because uh, Los Angeles region has has divided itself up into four regions. And the region that I'm a part of is uh, Territory 4, okay? And what we do, we cover areas all the way from the City of Commerce, the City of Montebello, Whittier, all the cities in between that, that areas that's located between the 710 on the west and the 605 on the east, all the way to Catalina. So we cover all of those particular cities. We also now, we have joined in with, we cover the cities of, of, of Torrance, Manhattan Beach, uh, Redondo Beach, Playa del Rey, Hermosa Beach. We cover those cities as well. So we cover pretty much a very large territory. I've been with the Red Cross for four years now, and in that time, I have been on a host of deployments. Uh, uh, about four hurricanes, about six tornadoes, and a mass of home fires. And so uh, you'd probably say, well, you know, how does Red Cross respond to home fires? Well, whenever there's a home fire, the fire department always calls us out to, 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 uh, the, to come to that family because for the most part, they've lost everything. They've lost everything. So when we arrive, we at most times we see them sitting out on the curb. Okay. So we come there. So when they see our red trucks or they see us, our red shirts or jackets coming, they know that help is on the way. And so uh, I oversee a team which is known as the Disaster Action Team. That's the team that responds out to the house fires. Also, I oversee our mass care shelter for the tow territory. So whenever there's a disaster to where your house is unlivable, either to a flood or either to a fire, well then we have to open up shelters. And I'm responsible for opening up shelters in and around our territory. And so we have shelters that we contract with different companies, different firms, schools, churches, city governments that we use those places in order to uh, use as shelters for the people. So, but as uh, David said, we're here tonight and, you know, at, at what the city of Long Beach does, but also what the, what the Red Cross do. One of our main things is that we go out and we prepare people for disasters. Now, we are going to have disasters and emergencies happen all the time. The question is, when an emergency happens, do you know what to do? And by a show of hands, you know, that then how many are prepared for a disaster right now? That's what I thought. <laughs> that is why you here. And you know what? You know what? Most of everybody that, that I'm pretty sure when David goes out, when we go out and we go to venues like this, a lot of people more, more than likely are not even prepared. Okay? But you see, we want to change that tonight. So when you leave out of here tonight, you are going to be more prepared to, tonight after you leave from here than what you were when you came in. Now, disasters do happen. The Superdome, Hurricane Katrina, I was there. That picture right there doesn't do it any justice. You would have to have been there to see that. Masses of people all sitting around with nowhere to go because they literally have nowhere to go. They've lost pretty much everything. They've lost everything that they've ever that they've always had. Nothing. The Superdome, a year prior to that, I was there for the Southern Classic. To go back there a year later to see the Superdome, it was horrendous. Okay? It was a nightmare, total nightmare. The other one, this is the earthquake that, that happened in Haiti. Okay? Devastated. I don't do international deployments. I only do national deployments. But we have a Red Cross and the Red Crescent movement. Uh, they deploy out of uh, different countries to help out different countries and nations who will go through devastation. But this is Haiti. 
this was about a, 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 a eight or nine pointer earthquake that devastated that country. They're still trying to recover today, okay? Down here, tsunami in Japan. We know about that. We were affected by that indirectly. The waves that hit our southern shores or hit our western coast, okay, they rose up about two to three inches. Is so, and then right there, house fires, home fires, wildfires. We are accustomed to those particular things. We see that all the time. It's almost like clockwork. You can almost set your clock by it, especially for the wildfires, because we are going to have wildfires. Now, there are four denials that most people, and probably some of you in here, have probably said when it comes to a disaster, and that is. Well, it won't happen to me, and it won't happen here. Well, the no four pictures that I showed you, a number of those people probably said the very same thing. Okay? The other thing is this. Well, if it does happen here, it won't be that bad. Can you really say that? How many of you remember that five-point earthquake we had about two or three months ago? It was on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. happened about 8.15. I'm pretty sure if y'all thought about it, well, then nobody had planned for an earthquake to happen that night. You were probably in your house, probably looking at TV. Some were probably out. Some were probably at the mall. Some probably at the movies. Some probably just out doing whatever. And all of a sudden, the ground started to shake. Had that have been a stronger earthquake, how many people would have been prepared at that particular time? Nobody really knew that we were going to have an earthquake on that day when they got up that morning. But by, before they went to bed that night, they did have an earthquake. Now, we're always having earthquakes. We have earthquakes that happen about every five seconds of every day. They're just some that you just don't feel. But the ground is always moving. It's always moving and shifting. And so, which is to say... We're always in, in, in danger of having a, a strong earthquake. The next thing is, if it is that bad, there are people who will help me. Don't bet your bottom dollar on that one, okay? Because most people feel like, well, if it happens, well, then my neighbors are next door who I've been knowing three to four to five years, they're going to help me. Well, no, they won't because they're going to be trying to help themselves. Well, you know what? The government, the city of Long Beach, the you know the county of Los Angeles, the state, the state of California, FEMA, they're going to be there. Yeah, you know what? They probably will be there, but you probably going to be so far down the food chain that it might be months before they get to you. Okay, that's for real. People in New York, when I when I was uh, when I was deployed to New York, I was deployed to New York for Hurricane Sandy three times. And a lot of those people that were in New York, in Manhattan, in New Jersey, and a lot of the surrounding areas around there, they didn't expect for Sandy to bring practically half of the Atlantic Ocean into their backyards. They didn't expect that. Okay? Needless to say, a lot of them were not repaired, uh, prepared, and a lot of them were then when it happened, a lot of them were, were really going to the government and going to the state of New York and going to FEMA to help. But you see, the thing of it is, is that they could not help them because all of the proof of that they own anything was washed away. Mm. So those are things that you have to expect. Those are things that will happen. Lastly is this. It's going to be so bad it doesn't even matter what I do. And most people think that. They feel like, well, hey, if it's going to be that bad, I don't care what I do. I can prepare. I can do this. I can do that. But, you know, hey, this just going to wash all my stuff away. And, I, you know, hey, I just throw up my hands and just say, that's it. So people will be in denial about that. They will be in denial about trying to help. But you know what? The thing of it is, is this, is that there are sometimes we know that there will be some dis disasters. Now, we have a, let's see, 
This pretty much kind of gives you a demonstration. You see, let me, if it, uh, if it actually goes. But this is a, just to give you the feeling of uh, an earthquake, okay? This could happen to you tomorrow. It's a sunny morning in Southern California. Across the region, 7.5 million people are busy at work. Several hundred thousand of them are commuting to jobs in different counties, far from where they live. Over 200,000 commuters work and reside on opposite sides of the San Andreas Fault. Today, these families and many others across the region will be separated. people will die. 53,000 people will be injured. And $213 billion in damage will occur. It's 10 a.m. The largest earthquake to hit Southern California in modern times has just begun. Some people react appropriately. Others don't. In the intense shaking, nearly 1,500 buildings collapse. Infrastructure is severely compromised, and 300,000 buildings suffer significant damage. The rupture travels 200 miles northwest along the San Andreas Fault. Violent shaking lasting as long as two minutes in some areas. Finally, the earthquake is over. Many of the lifelines of Southern California have been disrupted. A large number of people are trapped in collapsed buildings. Over 1,600 fires start, some turning into super conflagrations. Millions of people are trying to use their phones, causing the system to become overloaded. In the months ahead, there will be tens of thousands of aftershocks. Residents will struggle to recover from the earthquake. There will be no water for weeks or months, and no electricity. Traveling from point to point within the city will be extremely difficult, and 255,000 people will be displaced from their homes. We are all in this together. We will suffer the consequences if we don't do our part right now. How quickly life gets back to normal after this disaster is up to you and those around you. Your level of personal preparedness will determine your quality of life after the quake. It's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit, and enough water for each person in your household to have at least one gallon of water a day for three days. Have an emergency plan. Decide now where you will meet your family after an earthquake. Make sure there's a person out of town you can contact to let your loved ones know that you're okay. Homeowners should be sure to bolt their house to its foundation. Consider whether earthquake insurance makes sense for you as part of your financial plan. Even if you are not a homeowner, you can secure your personal possessions against earthquake damage. Preparedness is not only for the home, but also for business. Be sure that your company has emergency plans for a major earthquake. Empower yourself and your family. Be prepared. Sobering thought, isn't it? How many of you here were doing the, uh, was here when we had the uh, Northridge earthquake? Okay. And uh, that was a pretty devastating earthquake. That was about a, that was about a 7.0 earthquake. Okay. 
and part of the infrastructure that that uh, collapsed was portions of the 10 freeway right over the, the La Brea and Fairfax Street that collapsed. Uh, there was and a new portion of the bridge that was out in Lancaster that collapsed. Okay, that portion of uh, a link of a freeway, new <coughs> a link of a freeway that that collapsed. It broke down. Okay, and that was actually the first casualty. A uh, Los Angeles police officer, he was the first casualty of that of that earthquake. Because I, from what I remember, what from what I recall he didn't realize that the bridge was out until it was too late, okay? So these things are going to happen. They're going to happen. We live in an earthquake state. We live along the fault, a major fault where there are several small fault lines in and around this, this county. Is so you're going to always feel those kind of earthquakes. You're going to always feel the things. The question is, and I'm going to be saying this over and over again, the question is, it's not that we, the emergencies and disasters do happen. The question is, are you prepared? Are you ready for disasters that's going to happen? You know, we talk about that big one that's, that, that's supposed to come. And for all intents and purposes, it probably will come. And when it does come and when it does happen, it's going to be massive. It's going to be very massive. So, so one of the things that we want to do is make people, tell people to have a plan. These are some of the things that you can, you can count on that's going to happen. There are going to be delays in help. You remember what a part of that, uh, those four denials people are talking about? Well, you know what? I'm going to be able to get help or anything from my, from my friends, from my neighbors, from the government, from FEMA. You know, yeah, it, they're going to help you. But like I said, you won't be on their priority list. Mm. Not only that, power outages. A lot of us going to be in the dark. And we're going to be in the dark for a long time. Okay? So you so you can you can bet your bottom dollar on that. The other thing is there's going to be road closures, roads that may not be passable because they're damaged will probably be used for emergency equipment, emergency services. So your regular route to get to wherever you normally get to might be impassable because of it's too it's too damaged or. They might have a lot of emergency equipment down there. They might shut off a whole boulevard, okay? The other thing is property damage. You would, you know, because we're going to have some property damage. It's going to be a lot of property damage. Your property, the other property, and everybody else's property after that. So it's going to be a lot of property damage that, that you're going to have to expect during that time. The other thing is lack of clean water, okay? A lack of clean water. A lot of the water system is probably going to be contaminated. And so I like the idea of even, you know, they putting uh, enough water into your bathtub. But also, like my brother said, make sure the bathtub clean. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a little less desirable. But you know what? Desperate times call for desperate measures. You know, hey, just go on in there and just do what you got to do with it, okay? And so and when you think about what the alternative could be, well, then everybody's sitting around there, you know, dying from dehydration when there's a big tub of water in there because there's a bathtub ring in there and nobody <laughs> want to touch it, okay? It so, no. Drink that water. Use that water for something, okay? But it's going to be a lot of clean water. It's going to be a lot of water. It's going to be contaminated. Water is going to be your most vital need during a disaster. Yes, sir. Okay? During a disaster is going to be your most vital need. Because if the body does not have water flowing through all of our organs in our body, it is dependent upon the water that we drink in order for there to be functionality of all our organ systems. And when the body does not get that water after a certain period of time, particularly after seven days, there's going to be, there's going to be an array of body shutdowns. 
those organs are going to shut down. The first organ that's going to go is your kidneys. Mm. That's going to be the first organ to go. After that, it's going to be the liver and spleen. So you got to have water constantly going through <coughs> your body, okay? And you have to have enough clean water. We say that, you know, I know the movie says, and somebody, some people say that we should have enough for three days, but the Red Cross say we should have enough at least a week. There should be three gallons of water for every person inside of your family, which means that uh, if you got to have you got to have enough water that you're going to use for drinking, for cleaning, because we, you know, we 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 may not be able to get in there and take that that luxury bath that we all are used to having to take, but we have to be able to at least clean ourselves up enough to where people won't, don't want to be by us after a few days, okay? So we want to make sure that we have enough water for that. And one of the things that David brought out that we say, you got at least 40, 50, 60 gallons of water inside of your hot water heater, okay? I would suggest using that as the last resort, okay? Is so... Uh, some people say, well, what about if you have pools? Well, I wouldn't suggest using a pool water unless I was using that for irrigation because most pools have a lot of chlorine in it and everything like that. That is not good for drinking, okay? Is so, but I would use that. But I would use my hot water heat. I would use all my other water first, but then I would use my hot water heat to make sure that you have a, 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 a sprig it on it so that you can be able to turn it on and turn it off. Okay, because that is going to be your best resource for some water. And so the other thing is that you're going to have to expect to live in shelters. I don't know if how many people have ever lived in a shelter, but living in a shelter, well, let me put it this way. It beats sleeping on the ground. Okay. It beats sleeping on the ground. One of the things that in the Red Cross, I am a shelter manager. And so I manage shelters when when we have when we have to open up shelter is so uh, and I've lived in shelters when I was when I responded to the tornado in her, in, uh, in Oklahoma we set up a shelter that I, that I managed and you have to live in a shelter you just lay on cots about that far up off the ground okay we'll give you a we'll give you a blanket I don't know if you've probably seen some of our Red Cross blankets we'll give you a blanket and we'll give you what's called a comfort kit. And you'll have all of your worldly possessions right there with you. And you're going to be about at least this far apart from each other, from somebody that you probably never met or seen before. But I guarantee you, by the time you leave out that shelter, y'all be friends, OK? <laughs> so, but you would have to live in a shelter. That's not the most desirable place to have to live. But the thing of it is, like I said, it beats living in the streets and sleeping up in the stars on the streets. So you, those are the things that you have to understand. Limit, limited or no communication. Because, uh, you know, the communication is going to be off, but the communication is going to be there for emergency needs only. So make sure that your cell phones is charged and you got a battery pack because once the power is out, there ain't going to be no charging. Okay? The other thing is that we can be ready. So one of the things that the Red Cross says is to get a kit, be prepared, and be informed. Okay, so what does all of that mean? Getting a kit, be prepared, and, be, and being informed. Well, it means this. Getting a kit means that you get the essentials. As you can see, what is the most important thing that's up there? Water. Water is the most important thing up there. Okay? We can live a whole lot longer without food, but without water, we're not going to live very long. Okay? And so the other thing is that you want to make sure, those of you who take medications for it, with it for anything, you want to make sure that you have you an extra supply of medication. Okay? Whether it's for high blood pressure, whether it's for diabetes, whether it's for whatever, make sure that you have enough medication. Now, some people might say, well, you know what, when I go to the doctor, I can only get just a limited amount per month, okay? Well, what you do is about that is that, let's say, for instance, like I take high blood pressure medicine. 
and so I'll get a I'll get a 30 day supply. So what I do is well then I'll use 25 days and I'll bank five days. Is okay. So when I get my so by the time I go for my next, usually my doctor give me another twenty another 30 days on the 25th day. So what I do is on the 25th day, well then what I'll do, I'll go and get me another 30-day supply, and then I'll bank five days more out of that, okay? So now, the only thing is, is that you got to remember to swap those five days out because certain medications can't last too long. So on the second month, on the second supply, I'll take the five days that I had and swap them out for a new five days, and I'll use those. But I have constant medication for at least that's going to at least last me for at least five or six days. Okay. And so same way with your water. Well, then but, oh, and you want to be, make sure that you date your water. Whenever you save water, you want to date it. And so they have this one that they have water now. I don't know, David. You have heard. We have you know, there's this company now that that has canned water. Yeah. Okay. They, as a matter of fact, they were at uh, Long, uh, prepared Long Beach. They have canned water that you can get that will last that can last up to 50 years. Okay. It'll outlast most humans. Okay. But you can buy you can get it in the cans. They come in a pack of. They come in a pack of six, like a you know, a, a six pack of, of that you can get, but you can also get a whole case. Now, the only problem with that <coughs> is that if you got all these cans of water and you have to start moving cases of water, that's going to be a lot of that's going to be a lot of weight to have to try to move around. Okay, <laughs> is so, but. At some of the surplus stores or army surplus stores, well, then you can get some MREs. Everybody know what MREs are? Meals ready to eat. In the military, we call them rationings, okay? And so, but they're meals ready to eat. And they've improved greatly over the years, okay, from when I first started eating them. But um, they improved greatly over the years. But, it's so, but, um, but you know, that now, I mean, I, we, you know, so every so often we go out and we test the new MREs that's coming out, and they're very good. They're very good. Okay. And so the only thing that I say about with them MREs, you don't want to be eating a whole lot of those MREs. Okay. No. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't you don't want to be eating a whole lot. Of, you know, use those MREs sparingly. Okay. Get you some beef jerkies or something because you don't want to be just eating MREs all the time because they are very rich. Okay? Is so uh, and you know what very rich food will do to your system after a while. Okay? So they're better than nothing, but caution on the MREs. Okay? How long so how long do you want it like that relax? Water like that in that container, if you do not open it and you keep it in a dark, dark it can last you up to a year. Okay. What happens to the water after a year? Yeah, it, it just gets stale. I mean, you can still drink it. I mean, stale water is better than no water at all. <laughs> you can still drink it. Okay. Hey, but you might want to use it. You know. If I could add that. Yeah, go ahead. It's the oxygen in the water over time after a year, even though it's sealed, will start to separate. Mm -hmm. and that's when it gets nasty. You shouldn't drink it. What you can do, though, with that water is actually take the top off, put it in a big bowl, put eight drops of water in it, eight drops of, uh, I'm sorry, chlorine bleach chlorine. in it. Agitate it really, really good for about 30 seconds. Let it sit for two hours. You can use it again, but you have to use it right away. It's an oxygenation process that leads to bacteria developing enzymes that create mold or uh, 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 you know, that kind of stuff in it. So you want to be careful with it. Make sure it's sealed. Oh, if you don't use it for drinking, just use it for, for washing or cleaning or something, okay? The one thing about it, you don't want to throw no water away, okay? You want to you use that water the best way you can, okay? The next thing is that, uh, is getting a kit, some emergency supplies. How many people have flashlights? How many people have flashlights in their car? How many people have flashlights in their house? How many people have flashlights at the head of the, at, on the nightstand? Okay, they don't work. <laughs> that means I don't have a flashlight. Okay, that's what that means. Uh, so, but 
you should have a flashlight in every room of your house. A flashlight that's in a workable flashlight in every room of your house. Okay? So as well as inside of your car. Is so because you never know when a disaster is going to happen or when an emergency is going to happen and you need to have that right there because because a lot of times when disasters happen they don't always happen when the sun is out they happen right way in the wee hours of the morning or when it's dark and you need to be able to know and move around a lot of times you a lot of people think you might know a way around your house when the lights go out but you get the walking and you get the bumping into the coffee table and all that other stuff well, then you find out that you don't know your way around your house when it, in the dark as you thought you did. So you better get you a flashlight. Have your flashlight, put them in key points of your house, even in the garage. And so you need to have flashlights in there. And when you have the flashlights, make sure you check the batteries in them. And so well, I have flashlights in every part of my house and in the garage and in the car and in my wife's car. And so every so often where I just go there, flick them on for about, you know, for about 30 seconds to a minute, turn it off, put it right back, okay? And so, but you want to have a flashlight in every part of your house. You always want to need a radio, okay? I don't know if they, do they still make those little 9-volt transistor radios? And so if, you, if they do, hey, invest in one, okay? Get you one of those. Uh, other, short of that, you can go to the Red Cross, go on the Red Cross website and get you one of those cranking radios, okay? Uh, so you can use that, but you're going to need a radio because you're going to need information. You're going to need to know what's happening. You're going to need to know what's happening around you. Uh, so get your radio. The other thing is that when you get the radios or when you get the flashlights, make sure you get batteries. How many people during Christmas time, they go out and buy kids toys, and the one thing they forget, oh, man, forgot the batteries. Okay? Make sure you have batteries. Make sure you have enough batteries. Make sure you have the right size batteries. Okay? And so you want to make sure that you have the batteries. The next thing is cash. You want to make sure that you have extra cash. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, but, but, but you want to have this cash for an emergency. You say, it's an emergency now. <laughs> so, well, let me clarify. In a disaster emergency, <laughs> in a disaster emergency, you want to have, you want to have, you know, cash. What, what we recommend is that you have $150, but in small de no, uh, denominations, no larger than a $5 bill, okay? Reason being is because that doing disasters, well, then you got, you know, you got all the people that, that's going to be out that's going to try to capitalize on disasters, okay? Uh, so, you know, don't come out there with your big 50s and $100 bills, okay? <laughs> Because that's just what you might pay for a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> okay? And so the thing that you want to do is get you some $1 bills and some $5 bills. And those should be for emergency uses only. Emergency uses only. Emergency uses only. So what does emergency mean? It means that I need that for when times get really bad. Times doesn't get bad when you when you trying to make that Macy's 24-hour sale. Okay, sorry, ladies. Okay, it doesn't get bad when you're trying to get the coals, and you say, "Well, I'm between my I'm between paycheck, but I got." That little hundred dollar bill over there with the ones, I'll put it back once I get my money back. No, you're not. You ain't going to put it back. So let it alone. Put it away. But also remember where you put it when you actually going to need it, okay? Yeah, so don't hide it so good from yourself that you can't even remember where you hid it from. So you want to make sure that you have enough. Make sure you got enough, enough to cash. You want to think about the cash. The other thing is contact information. Now, one of the good things about the contact information with these particular things that I hope everybody got yes. 
is that you can put all the information and everything that you need. And you want to write that, this, the, the stuff down. Because I know we got our smartphones and our intelligent phones and all the other type of phones. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we, 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 we've gotten so modernized that we don't want to dial nobody. So what we do, we, we, we put that number in and then we tag a number to it. So they, all we have to do is just hit that number and it rings up to everybody. And after that, because we've done that so long, now we don't come brain dead when it comes to trying to remember everybody's numbers. That's the truth. Okay. That is it. So now you need to write those number down, the numbers down on a sheet of paper or however, and put it in this plastic. Now this plastic right here is is one of the one of the best things that uh, we've come up with. Okay. We did this jointly with with Southern California Edison. And on these, this, these bags, it has a list of things that you need to put in this bag, okay? All the important things that you need to put in this bag, like telephone numbers, uh, pres uh, your, your prescription, you know, uh, 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 names and numbers and the doctor's name and uh, different other information. There's a number of information that's in here. On the flip side, there's also this, this, out, this uh, sheet where you can put your doctor's name down, write his telephone number, write your prescription, what type of medication that you use that should go inside of here, okay? Now you want to put copies of your, your rental agreements, your notes, your deeds, birth certificates, copies of those that should go in here, okay? Now, where do you think the most safest place in your house is to put, place this? Yes, inside your freezer. All you have to do is put all your information in there, roll that stuff up, you know, put some of the stuff that, that move some of that stuff in the refrigerator that probably shouldn't even be in there, move it out the way, place this inside there. This protect all of your information against freezer burns. Okay? They will. <laughs> so, no, no, you won't be taking this out, okay? Because we, even the, 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 the fire departments, what they said that if a house burns down, usually the only thing that's still standing is the chimney in your refrigerator, okay? And so if you've lost all your information, they know they'll go to your refrigerator, and if you, were, if you had this in there, they will find it, and you have all your information in there. Everything didn't go up in smoke, okay? And that that the fire didn't destroy, they didn't destroy. So, so these are some of the good bags. So I hope everybody has, has gotten one of these particular type of bags. One of the next things that you, everybody should be able to have is duct tape. Duct tape is good for just about everything. Okay, you can duct. I mean, <laughs> you can seal duct tape. You can you, you can seal seal a hem on with duct tape. You can do all kind of stuff with duct tape. But one of the things that duct tape is good for is for doing fires if you're in the room is sealing off of the, the, those areas for smoke. You want to make sure that that's part of your kit when you're, doing, when you're doing your kit. The other thing is that remember the pets. You know, we're so pet conscious now, so we want to make sure that we remember, we remember Fido when we're, you know, putting stuff together. The other thing is when we get a kit, is that personal stuff personal kit. Now we sell these these particular kits there. These come in various sizes. These are, are individuals. They're three for three people. They're for family. Uh, and they last anywhere from any from 10 days to, I mean from 5 days to 15 days. You can get these kits. The, yes sir? you get a discount for being in your seminar? No. The only discount you get is, is me telling you where you can get the discount. <laughs> you won't get this kind of discount. Okay. It is so. But you can do that. Now, short of you doing this, short of you doing this, we have what's called the 21 week, which is inside your which are this kit. 21 week that's in there. If you start now, if you start now, okay, do a checklist of everything that's in here. When you go to like uh, 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 Costco's or going to Sam's Clubs or going to different, you know, the uh, places that you go, go and shop. Which pictures of your program right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so what you want to do is is basically when you go there and buy you a, a you know, that, 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 that big can of tomatoes or, or peas and beans and everything, get an extra can. Use that, that, that that's put, add that to your emergency kit. Is so right now is when you got to start thinking about it. Actually, to tell you the truth, really, yesterday is when you started to, to start thinking about it. But we wasn't here yesterday, so you should be thinking about this right now. Is so let me tell you, it is very important that you start thinking very seriously about this. Okay. Because, like I said, disasters and emergencies are going to happen all the time. And you don't want to be the person that's going to be on the outside looking in. When you get, this is for, for your house. Make sure that you get those type of things for, the, for your house. A two-week supply. Change your clothes. Think about the hygiene stuff. The toys, if you have kids, think about toys and games for your kids. Because your kids, they're going to they, they're gonna run you crazy, okay? Now, you're already thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do about tomorrow and what I'm going to do about other things. You want to be able to get, you know, do something to pacify the kids because they're, they're you know, first of all, they're going to experience emergencies and disasters a whole lot different from we as adults. Okay? So you got to be aware of that. It, but you want to make sure that you have things for, for the kids. Have things for yourself. Okay? A one week having to be out of your house for a week, you know, hey, you're going to have to need something to keep your mind going, keep your mind clear. Okay, so you want to think about those things too as well. The next thing is that, that David talked about is that you could get a kid by your bed. Okay? During an earthquake, the bed is not going to stay there. It's going to be over here by, over there by the chairs. So you want to make sure that you Get you a bag, put your tennis shoes in there, put your flashlight in there, and put your pair of glasses in there for those of you that need glasses. Okay, tie that thing around the, the leg of one of your bed of the of, of the bed. So when the earthquake does move, well, the, the does move your bed. Well, then your bag will move right along with it, <laughs> and, and it's not way over there. And you got to walk through all the glass that's on the floor in order to get that. So always make sure that you have a sturdy pair of shoes by your bed. Now, it, that, I had to get used to that because I'm the kind, I do not like shoes under the bed, okay? That's just me, okay? My wife would be putting them shoes up under the bed, and I'm like, <laughs> would you please? All that closet, again, you got your shoes up under the bed, okay? <laughs> it is so... It was just, but I, but after doing this, I realized that now it's better to have a pair of shoes up under the bed, okay? Because when we have we have an emergency, well then I do not want to have to be stepping in glass or whatever that might fall, okay? And I don't want her having to step in doing all, all that too. So, so I've got used to the shoes up under the bed. Just make sure it's one pair. Don't make sure it's about four or five pairs. <laughs> <laughs> <And> so. <laughs> I'm like, my goodness, girl, what we got a closet for? Okay. The other thing is being informed. We got to be informed. We got to know what's going on around us, okay? Because one of the dangers of us not being prepared is not knowing what's happening. We got to know what's happening. We got to know where the disaster is happening. We got to know where the emergencies of, you know, and where the, the, the emergency treatments and all the different things that we got to know. We got to know what FEMA is doing, where they're setting up staging areas for, to, to help people to be able to get back on their feet. So we got to be informed about things that, that we have to do. But before we can be informed, you got to have a plan. Everybody got to have a plan. We got to have a plan, which means that we need to talk about this in our families. We need to talk about this in our families. We need to talk about this in our neighborhoods. Okay, in my block, because I'm, you know, everybody know that I work with the Red Cross, and they know that I'm a disaster specialist. They know that I also am a part of CERT, Community Emergency Response Team. Is so they know that I'm a part of CERT. So I got my whole block is prepared. 
They got their disaster kits. They got disaster kits in their cars. They got disaster kits in their homes. They got, you know, and, 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 and we have a plan. Not only do my, in my house do we have a plan, but my whole block we got a plan, okay? Because our whole block might be cut off from the rest of the world. And it might be just us depending on, uh, 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 depending on each other. And so we've already made assignments. And so this house, they're going to be taking care of this particular thing. <coughs> this house is going to be taking care of this particular thing. And this one over here, they got their duty, what they're going to be doing, okay? And so we got it organized, and we meet once a month to make sure we go over all that stuff, that everybody still know what they're supposed to do. What street and so, no, I ain't tell you what street you live on because no, no, you know, you gonna create your own on your street, okay? Because anybody don't live on our street, well then, hey, they gonna meet with some disaster when they come on our street, okay? And so we got we got everybody that's on our street on our block, and it's about and there are there are t uh, 27 homes uh, on my on my block. And we got everybody that's on the block because I go around and we check to make sure that everybody's prepared. You know, hey, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna prepare everybody on other parts of the county, I should be preparing people that's right there on my street as well as in my house. Okay, and so everybody on my street and my house and in my street are prepared for a disaster in case anything happens. If in your family, assign roles. Assign roles to different people in your family. This person is going to be responsible for this. That person is going to be responsible for this. Is so, and everybody got to know the plan. You can't be the only one with the plan, and you don't tell nobody. <laughs> so everybody got to know about the plan. So share the plan with everybody. Okay. So you want to make sure everybody has the plan, know the plan, and if, when the plan changes, everybody know the changes of the plan. <laughs> Not only that, out-of-state contact. David was talking about out-of-state contact. In the Red Cross, we call that a relay system. Okay? I have three out-of-state contacts. I have an out-of-state contact in Arizona, out-of-state contact in Texas, where I'm from, and out-of-state contact in Oregon. And so if anything happened in the Southern California area, well, then my family, my kids, they know who to call to find out whether or not we're okay. So all we have to do is just call those people and just say, hey, we're fine. So when our kids call to find out how we're doing, they can get the message from their aunt, get the message from their cousin, get the message from, from uh, either their, you know, one of their uncles and say, hey, we're fine. They can deliver messages to us. So we have those. You want to have that out-of-state contact. And let the out-of-state contact know that they are the out-of-state contact, too, as well. Okay? Also, have evacuation routes. Have more than two evacuation, uh, evacuation routes. And so you want to be able to have those routes because one route might not be passable. It may not be. So you want to make sure that you have at least two evacuation routes and everybody knows. And see, you know, you know, we kind of make light of it, but you'd be surprised. Everybody don't pass on the information. Or if they pass on the information, it's not the right information. So we want to make sure that the information is right that we pass on to one another. Also, again, thinking about the pets. How are the pets going to be taken care of? Okay? If they get separated, because during disasters, pets, they freak out. Okay? They get the running and, and, and moving around, and, you know, sometimes because they're nervous, they're scared. Uh, so they may run away. So you want to make sure that your pets have IDs so that if, if, they're, if they're ever saw or uh, found, they know how to, you know, to get your pets back to. Now, consider different routes. How many of us have more than one way to get to our house? There ain't enough hands. How many people have more than one way to get to their job? You need to have at least at least three routes to get to any of your favorite places. At least three routes. So tomorrow or this weekend, y'all start planning out some new routes to get home. Okay? Yeah, that's real because you know, hey, you know, I mean if. 
if 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 everybody always go down Long Beach and then Long Beach get <coughs> get get cut off, how you gonna get home? Okay. Or if you if 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 the freeway, the 91 freeway or the 405 freeway is shut down or any of those any of those streets that's going east to rest, west that has to go over the reservoir and the reservoir collapse, okay? Well then you got to figure out a way how am I going to get on the other side of that reservoir of the LA River to get back on this side. So you got to hey, you got to figure out you got to figure out how am I going to get over there to my family? My family is over here, but the bridge is, the streets is broken down. They collapsed. And so you got to figure out how I'm going to go get there. And so you start planning now and not the day of. You start planning the day of the earthquake, it's too late. It's too late then. Because everybody done beat you out. Especially when it comes to getting your food. All of, you know, Costco's, all them places, they're going to be, the shelves are going to be empty on the day of the, of the day of an earthquake. Or all the late people are going to be making a mad dash to get in there. Okay? Yes, sir. What if water cut you off from your home? What if water? Yeah. You can't get, if this house is hit the bridge, mm -hmm. and water between you and your home, how are you going to get there? Well, you may have to wait it out. That's why it's good to have a disaster kit inside your car. Because you may have to just wait until the water crests or recedes before you can get there. But that's the other thing that that's why we have a relay. That person be able to call somebody that, that's out of state and just say, you know what, hey, I'm fine over here. Everything's I know you can't get over on this side. So let 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 them know that you okay. All you got to do is call the same people and say, hey, I can't get over there because the water's too high and the bridge is out, but I'm fine. Okay? And so that's what you do. I mean some things you don't want to put yourself in harm's way. So you know, hey, we all love our family. But if we can't get to them, us losing our life trying to get to them is not gonna help them out at all. So we got to use a little common sense. Is just say, well, you know what? Hey, I can't get over there, but I'm fine. I already know I've called them and let them know I'm okay. We just wait till things get better. And if it takes two or three days for it to get better, that's so. These kits, these things right here, fill out disaster plans for your medication and everything. Always fill those out. You should have some in your plastic bag. Fill those out, put them in your plastic bag so that you'll have the information that's there for you. How often should you update them? Every time you change your medication, you update it. Any information that needs to be updated because you changed it, you need to change it on that too as well. So that, you, so that you're constantly current. The other thing is that, you know, you want to have drills inside your house. Have those drills so that every so you practice how to evacuate, practice what to do when a disaster strikes and not doing the disaster. But let me tell you, if you wait till the disaster, it's too late. It's too late. You practice that stuff now. This is when you prepare for war. It's during the time of peace. This is peace time. But we don't know when war going to strike. So we want to practice it and we want to know it right now. So we want to practice those things. Everybody, we, the last week, we had a what's called a. We went out to um, to North Long Beach. We had actually the uh, 90805 area, and what we did, uh, we replaced smoke detectors. Okay, we replaced smoke detectors, and all those homes in the 90805 area code because uh, we did a statistic that that when those had the most death due to fires in that area code. Okay and largely because they did not have smoke detectors or they had smoke detectors and they had no batteries in it. I mean, what's the, what good is having a smoke detector you don't have a battery in it, okay? And so what we did was last Saturday, well then, and, and they also did the same thing uh, up in LA. And so we went out 
to all those homes and everything, and we replaced smoke the homes with smoke detectors, and those that had smoke detectors didn't have batteries, we replaced them with batteries. So make sure everybody should have a smoke detector in their house. Should have a smoke detector in the house. It should be in the hallways. It should be in every bedroom. You also should have a, a fire extinguisher. It, not only that, but you all should also have a first aid kit in your house. See, these are some of the things we don't think about until we need them. And then we find out that we don't have it. You need to start thinking about those things now. The next thing is, is that being informed. So how do we be informed? Well, you see that house right there? That house right there was a house that got damaged during the North Ridge earthquake. That was up in the Jefferson area, around there by USC. Okay? Yeah, so, you don't even have to see the red tag, which is, which means that this house is unlivable. You can look at it until it's unlivable. <laughs> okay? But, these are the things that you need to respond to, the, you need to understand the risk of. Yes, sir? Uh, you live in one in and one in the south. Is there any place like you can buy rope ladders or something like that for you to make exits? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the Home Depot has them. Yeah, Home Depot has them. Okay. Is so, and when you do, when you get it, practice how to use it because you. I mean, you might. It might look like that's easy, but that ain't that. It's not that easy. Okay, because yeah, because we get yeah, right, right. Because when you panic and try to get out of there, <laughs> you might miss a step and just fall, <laughs> just fall right over. Okay, <laughs> and so you want to practice how to use those ropes and use those step ladders like that. Okay, is so. Um, uh, but so one of the things that we have to prepare for is earthquakes. We know that. We know we're going to have earthquakes. We live in an earthquake state. Home fires. Home fires are the most are the most disaster things that we respond to in the in, with the American Red Cross. We respond to a home fires at least 45 home fires a month. Okay, in and around Long Beach. Yes, sir. Is that any fire or just where there's total destruction? Uh, would you talk about that, that we respond to? Yeah, it's it's it, any home any fire so home fire not complete loss. Still yeah, this doesn't have to be a complete loss because uh, if we go there, because we actually, we do da the damage assessments. We assess the damage as to whether the house is livable or not, okay? And it's so, but a, a lot of times it may not be from the fire, it could be from the smoke. A lot of times it could be from the fire department, okay? Uh, so, but we do, we go, go out there and we do respond to house fire. That's all they, you know, if they, if they call us. We, we have this term, the Red Cross, we do not self-deploy, which means that, you know, if, if, if a fire happened here, God forbid it, if a fire happened here, well then because I'm with the Red Cross, well then I couldn't say, well I'm with the Red Cross, you know, let me start help. I would have to call what's called a disaster duty officer, okay, let them know that I just happen to be here, is it okay for me to do anything, okay? And then they would have to say yes or no. But I just can't, just because I'm here, just because I work with the Red Cross, I just can't just start doing something. I would have to call and get permission to do, okay? And that's with anything. I was in Texas when the Oklahoma uh, um, uh, earth, I mean, uh, tornado happened. But I couldn't go to Oklahoma and just say, well, you know what, I'm part of the Red Cross. You know, do y'all need me or anything like that? If, you know, I would have to call all the way back to California, to Los 